So today we are checking out the awesome Citra emulator from Windows PC. So in this setup guide I'm going to show you how to display your games in up to 4K resolution. I'm going to go through which games work and which games doesn't work with this emulator. I'm also going to go through configuring your controller as well as provide you much more to make your 3DS emulation experience that much better. So if you really want some awesome looking 3DS games, check this video out. Okay then, so before I start today's setup guide, make sure to hit notifications, subscribe and like if you liked today's video, it really helps my channel out a lot, plus it gets you upstate retro emulation content as I upload it, which is pretty much every day. So we're looking at the awesome Citra 3DS emulator today, and I'm going to show you how to set this up. So first of all, we're going to head over to the official Citra website and the thing I'm going to mention first is if we go to the compatibility tab, it's going to tell you here what runs perfectly and what runs okay. So primarily the games that are going to run just fine are generally great, which is in the light green color and perfect, which is going to be 100% flawless like it says. If I just drop down and go to the blue just there, perfect, to left click on that, that's going to bring up every game which has been tested with Citra, and that'll tell you everything which is going to be working fine. So for today's example, I'm going to be using a Sonic game. So this is actually categorized as a perfect game. So the game I'm using is Sonic Lost World, and as we can see, this was last tested by a user of Citra, December 2021, and this one is marked off as perfect blue. If we click into there, it's going to tell us a bit more details about the game, how it functions. And if we just scroll down a little bit, there's a little history of different users reporting what their gameplay experience was like with that particular game. So what we're going to do next is go to the download tab and download for Windows. Okay, so once we downloaded an emulator, you should download Citra Setup Windows.exe. If I double left click on this file, we're going to open up a welcome screen. So just press next here. And the next part of this is going to be to specify directory where do you want this emulator to be installed. So you can browse and select a different location for Citra to install to. I'm going to just allow this to go into the default location. So that's going to be in my local folder and it's going to create a new folder called Citra. So I'm going to press next. In the next part of the installation process is which components do we want to install. So if we just go for the nightly, this is the most recent stable version of Citra. So I'm going to leave Citra Canary unselected and press next. And I accept the license next. And next up, we are going to press next again and ready to install. The installation process has been completed, we're just going to go to finish and you're going to see there's no shortcut. So how do we get into this emulator? A really easy way around this is just go into your search bar. I'm going to type in Citra. Now I'm going to go to citraqt.exe. Just make sure this one's highlighted and I'm going to right click on it, open file location. And here it is. So this is the one we're looking for, citra-qt.exe. If I right click on that, show more options and send to desktop and we can close this down now now the next thing i'm going to suggest doing is just deleting that dot setup exe so just right click on that and delete and the next thing i also recommend is creating a folder for your dot 3ds games so again right click on the desktop new folder and we'll call this one 3ds games just drag your .3ds games into that folder and we're going to open up Citra for the first time. Now we need to add a new game directory. So obviously I've just created this 3ds games with my 3ds game inside. So I'm going to add a new game directory and point it towards this desktop folder that I've just created. So desktop, 3ds games folder, make sure that's highlighted and select folder. And here's the game. So we're just going to boot up this game by double left click on it and making sure it's all working. And if you get a little prompt about networks to access this app, just press on allow. Sega.
So as we can see, that's booted up fine. Everything's working okay. So we need to configure a controller next. So if I open up the emulator again, double left click on it. And this time I'm gonna to go to emulation, configure. And from configure, we can then go down to controls and we're gonna find the 3DS pads just here. So I've got my Google Stadia controller connected and I'm just gonna map this out. So just do as it says. So uh, for example, face button A, I'm gonna correspond this with A on my Stadia controller. Uh, B is gonna be re represented by B and so on. So it's pretty simple part to do. And once you map your controller, just go to new and we're going to name this whatever you wish. I'm going to just type just Jamie so we don't lose these settings. And then we're going to go to OK. And then if we open up the game again. So everything's working fine and I'm going to go to view full screen. So as we can see, Sonic Lost World, which is a very awesome game and totally underrated, is running just fine. Now we can actually set the display for this as well. So if we go up to view, screen layout, currently I've got it put onto large screen. If I play around with this and just maybe put this on side by side, open up the game again. <laughs> So as we can see by going to view and just simply going to screen layout, we can change how this looks. But personally, I recommend the large screen option. And Citra also has save in load state functions. So I'll show you how this works. So if I just go into the game again, I'm going to go to emulation, save state. So a very simple process with loaded save states through Citra is like you've seen, it will be emulation and then save state from where you want it to save and then simply load up the game and go to load state. Now in terms of video enhancements in Citra, we can do this. So what we do is go to emulation, configure, graphics, and we can play around with internal resolution here. Now just be cautious that the further up you bump this, if you've got a lower end computer, 
And in some cases, high-rate computers, your gaming experience in Citra isn't going to be wonderful. It's going to be laggy. So currently, obviously, this looks a lot better than the native resolution, which the 3DS could output. So even with the resolution, internal resolution that I just had it at, which is 720, we can see a massive difference already. But we can experiment with this and maybe bump it up to six times native. So let's just test this and OK. <laughs> So as you can see, in the case of Sonic Lost World, that internal resolution being boosted up is still running perfectly. So if that's the same for you, this is your golden opportunity to take advantage of it and just go back to configure graphics and we're going to boost that up a bit further. So let's go and take the biscuit this time, go to nine times native and OK and just boot up the game again. And like I say, if it does lag, then you know what the problem is. It's going to be your internal resolution. So just lower this down. <laughs> Okay, so we established how to generally upscale graphics and games within Citra, but we can do this per game. If we right click on one of the games in your library, from here, you just go down to properties and under enhancements, you can then configure enhancements for each game. So rather than going up to the general tab, you can do this per game, like I say, and this is going to give you all the settings like you would have done just a minute ago as I did it. So for example, if I wanted this specific game to use a two times native resolution, I could select it in here and even use texture filtering, which we can also do in the emulation tab. So let's just check out something like Scale Force as a filter for this. Within this section, we can also use the screen layout per game as well. So just like I showed you under the view option, we can actually do this per game as well. So large screen. And let me just remind you that if we go to the graphics tab, if you find a game which should be loading according to the Citra website and it's not loading, generally this is going to be under the graphics tab, graphics API. And by default, this is going to be using OpenGL. It's normally a cross between Vulkan and OpenGL, which are the ones which works. So most cases, OpenGL default global configuration is going to work just fine. And just make sure that enable VSync is always checked as well. What this does is reduce this screen tear in your gameplay. So I've applied these settings now for this game. If I go to OK and open this up, this should now run with those per game applied settings. And the video settings has been applied. So as we can see, per game settings, video settings is working just fine. And for those who are out there who fancies experimenting and applying some 3DS video settings, very easy. If we go up to the emulation tab at the top, configure, we're gonna go to graphics. And from graphics under stereoscopy, by default, this is gonna be turned off. If we turn this on in this example, I'm gonna be using interlaced but you can use any one of these options just make sure to put the depth up or down and under eye to render in monoscopic mode you've also got left eye and right eye options let's keep this to left eye and if i press ok and open up the game we'll see that this has now got a rather 3d effect to it <laughs> And as we can see, we now got that slight 3D effect to it. And that's it for today's Citra 3DS emulation guide for a Windows PC. So like I said at the start of the video, if you liked today's video, hit the notification, subscribe and like, so you don't miss any more upcoming retro emulation content I upload on my channel, Just Jamie, pretty much every day. Also, be sure to check me out on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.